Hello, my name is Philip Olaomit and thank you for joining me again today at Let's Talk About Worship. This is where we engage the scriptures to reveal God's mind about the subject of true and acceptable worship as recorded in John chapter 4 verse 23 to 24. And our goal is to be able to create a worship culture that is pleasing to the Father at all times. Today we want to continue about um, the worship dynamics. This is going to be part 3 and today I want to focus on your worship voice, your your voice, your worship voice and, um, and language. So let us get right on. I want you to please understand as a worshiper that out of all the tools that we use in worship, the voice is the most powerful. And when I say tools, I mean the things that enhances our worship. Your voice is a very powerful tool that God can use in worship. And as a matter of fact, your voice is the most important tool in worship that the Holy Spirit can ride on. Why? Words give direction. And while it is true that we can transfer our emotions or feelings uh, you know, through our, to our instrument, our soul, which is the seat of emotion, it, it, uh, uh, it, it, it generates the feelings and expresses them through our voices. Hosea chapter 14 verse 2 says, Take words with you and turn to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all iniquity, receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. I love that. The sacrifices of our lips. As a matter of fact, King James says, the calves of our lips. And you know what involves in sacrificing. You know, you, there, there has to be something on the altar. So our voice is that which comes on, on the altar, which is reflected in our emotions. So meaning that our, the, the sacrifices of our lips are stated in John chapter 14, uh, in sorry, Hosea chapter 14 verse 2, is the communication of the genuineness of, of our heart in worship through our words. So our lips, our lips is, it helps us to communicate the genuineness of our heart. And that is what comes on the altar as sacrifices to the Lord. And when you understand how words work, you know, you will be interested in building yourself in this area so that you can use it to your advantage. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, when uh, the earth was void and um, um, everything was empty, God spoke and things changed. Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse uh, 3 to 4. The Bible said, and God said, hear that, God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that it was good and divided the light from darkness. So you will notice that God saw what he said. God said it and he saw it. So it is in worship. With words, we introduce the Father through the sacrifices of our lips as stated in Hosea chapter 14 verse 2. And I want you to please know that everything that God does in worship is done through his word. In uh, Psalms chapter 107 verse 20, the Bible mentioned that uh, uh, when God wanted to heal, he sent his word. He said, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, God told Joshua again, he said, have I not commanded you, that's words, have I not commanded you to be strong and be of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord is with you wherever you go. So words is how God encourages us in the place of worship. He encourages the worshiper, encourages the people as well. And also when God wanted to secure the redemption of man, the Bible said in John chapter 1 verse 14, it said, and the word became flesh. Jairus' daughter, Jairus' daughter died and Jesus said, little girl, I say unto you, arise. So when you lace your words with tunes, with melodies, or you wrap, you wrap it around, uh, you know, melody, it becomes something beautiful, something pleasant to usher in God's presence, to bring in God's presence. And as we worship, I want you to please know that our emotions, they have a place in worship. We need to understand that our emotions empower our words because when you are emotional, um, you know, there is a coordination that makes you one. Emotions unite your spirit, soul and, and body. There is no way your heart can be in, a, you know, your heart can be fully involved in a situation or in, in, in anything you're doing if your emotions are not involved. And um, when this happens, spiritual forces are engaged because unity is the language of the spirit. In Genesis chapter 27, 
Isaac demanded for venison because he wanted to build up his emotion. He wanted to build up his emotion to stir up his spirit in order to be able to release the blessing. And after Jacob received the blessing, there was no way to reverse it. Esau thought it was just, oh, you know, you just declare it, you just say it. But it's really more than that. He begged his father, so just say a word. No, it's not by just saying it. You know, there is a right time to say it. There is something that needs to be built up. There is something that needs to be stirred up before that word is released. So this is the major reason why we need to be careful when we speak, when we are angry. Your words are dangerous during these times, especially over people that you have authority over, like family or the people that you are leading. What you say at this point invites spiritual forces, whether good or bad. Because your words can be hijacked by spiritual forces because you invited them. Unity is the language of the spirit. And you know, this is the need, this is the this is the reason why we need to be, we need to have rule over our emotions and be able to use it rightly. And uh, uh, you need to know that when 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 you are emotional, whatever you speak at that time carries power than when you are not. And when somebody is angry, you know, they rain a lot of havoc when uh uh, uh, you know, which they later come to regret when they are when they are saying. So, our emotions they are very powerful. They are very important in worship if we know how to use them rightly. Our emotions help to re- to unite our spirit, soul, and body for God to take it over. And when you involve your emotions genuinely in worship, you get the attention of the Father. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse uh, 12 to 14 here. He said, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Verse 13, he says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you. That passage said, You, you will seek me and find me when you seek me, when you search for me with all your heart. There is no way that your heart will be coordinated, your heart will be fully in anything if your emotion is not involved. And we need to understand as worshippers that worship has a language. Worship has a language. A wise man once said that one of the important things to be successful is to learn the language of your profession. You know, when God wanted to put his blessing upon the people, he told Moses, he said, this is how you will put blessings on my people. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27, he said, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Verse 27, So, they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. So your worship language is saying God's words back to him and reflecting upon his deeds and his greatness. And every worshiper needs to know that God's names, they reflect his deeds. And when you go on an in-depth study into his names, how he came about those names, the event that surrounded it, it will give you a very strong stand. It's a very strong tool that you can use in, um, in, in, in worship. And as a worshiper, I want you to please note the place of holiness in worship. Holiness, it empowers your worship voice. It empowers your worship voice. A life of sacrifice empowers your worship voice. It creates a thick atmosphere of God's presence around you. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, the scripture says, The Lord said, But until this one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. So, worship, worship, your worship is empty without the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's, it's just like an athlete. Um, um, you know, an, an athlete is, we know that an, an athlete usually they are committed to, to, uh, an, uh, to a routine. And so it is, is expected for a worshiper to be committed to a routine, to maintain God's presence at all times. If you, if you, um, if you, if you have been uh, graced by God's presence, there are certain sacrifices that you need to be able to keep up in order to be able to maintain it because you can lose it. You can lose it. Samson, lo- you know, Samson lost it. He did not know that the- he did not know that God has left him. 
So maintaining God's presence requires that you commit to spiritual exercises that constantly kills the desires of the flesh. I'm talking about exercises like fasting, like praying, like studying, like meditating on the Word of God, constantly casting out imagination, casting down imaginations, you know, strange thoughts, wild desires, the things that set themselves against, against God, the little foxes that destroys our vineyard. You need to be conscious. You need to be conscious of what you watch, what you hear as a worshiper. If you want to maintain God's presence, otherwise when you allow some of those things, they begin to cloud your spirit and after a while, they take over. So you really don't want that to happen. In Psalm chapter 50 verse 5, the scripture says, gather the, my saints together to me, gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So if you are a worshiper, you need to be, you need to uh, subscribe to some exercises, spiritual exercises that will be purified, that will purify your heart, purify your, you know, uh, uh, you know, purify your spirit, purify your body, and run away from temptation. In uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says that let everyone, everyone, let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. You know, so today we've been able to discuss on the importance of your voice in worship, how it works, the place of emotions in worship, uh, your worship language, the place of holiness, and how to maintain God's presence. Next week, if the Lord permits, I would like to address some practical exercises to empower your voice in worship. I want to thank you for joining me uh, for joining me today. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified when we post more, more videos. Uh, and also, like this video, share this video with others to be blessed just as you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us this week. The Lord bless you. See you next week. Amen.